Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Art Kirsch and I are with the brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell. Steve, Hi. good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Stephen. Um, you know, Hi. I've, th I've been thinking uh, your message is that the brain basically believes whatever you tell it. Right. But it seems to me that with so many things going on, we can't be great at everything. So if we just keep telling our brain, you know, I'm a super athlete and I'm a uh, a, a great mathematician and I do and all these things, I can really be great at all these things. I get a feeling that um, uh, the brain that might be confusing to the brain. Is there any it truth to be, that? It can be. It can be overwhelming. Um, in the last. 60 years we've been studying how much the brain can take in and learn and um there's a wonderful book called phantoms in brain by dr v s ramachandran who talks about the fact that neuromathematicians at ucla have concluded that the human brain um, is the most complex organism in the universe and its ability to take in new information is virtually infinite but there is a limit to that. And the limit is what we say to ourselves. In fact, what I tell my audiences when I speak is that the primary element that holds us back from anything, from learning and growing and changing is what we say to ourselves. But at the same time, we are in this time in man's history where we are absolutely overloaded by choices. There was a book written called The Paradox of Choice by Dr. Barry Schwartz. And he did what is called the jam study. And what he did was he took subjects in his experiment and he uh, took them to a grocery store and he looked at the results of giving them different types of jams to choose from. And he discovered that the more choices there were, the less jams they chose, which is what he wasn't expecting. The more choices they were, the less, the more they became confused with all the choices that they had in front of them. And then, and this happens at Starbucks or at Pete's, you order a certain kind of coffee and you look at all the other different kinds of coffee and you taste it and then you say, you know what, maybe I should have gotten this other kind of coffee and you kind of begin blaming yourself. In other words, it's really a, a point where you are so overwhelmed by information that you really can't make decisions. So what I tell my audience is this, realize this, that your brain wants to be your best friend. When I wrote my first book, the original title was Making Your Mind Your Mentor. My publisher said, nobody knows what a mentor is, so they changed it to Making Your Mind Magnificent, but I like my title better. A, a mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. So as we go out into the world today and as we're shopping and going to the internet and going to Amazon and looking at all the choices that we have, we really do become overwhelmed with all the things that we can choose. So what do we do with that? Realize this, that the first thing you want to ask yourself is what do you really want? What is your passion? Where you want to be? What do you want to do? Because that is what the brain is going to follow. There's a wonderful principle behind this, and that is this, that your brain locks on to whatever you choose to lock on to. When I was a little boy, my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle. He took me out to this road, took the training was off. And he said, now, son, before I give you a little shove, and don't worry, I'm going to run next to you. You see that rock on the road about 50 feet? Yes, daddy. Don't run into that rock. And I got down on the bike, 
I locked onto the rope so I would not run into it. You already know what happened. Bam, right into the rock. That's what you want to realize. You want to lock onto what you deem as important because that's what your brain is going to do. Here's an illustration. One of my favorite characters was raised in Australia. And he entered the first Australian marathon, which went from Sydney to Melbourne, 885 kilometers, 545 miles. And the reporters ganged up on him. His name was Cliff Young. And they said, what are you doing here running this race? You're 65 years old. And we see that you don't have racing shoes. You've got Australian muck boots. What are you doing? And Cliff Young answered by saying, well, I spent my life in the outback, chasing my 2,000 head of sheep on my 2,000 acre farm. I mean, this is a five day race. I've run sheep for three. I thought this race would be fun. So he ran the race with 150 of the top runners in the world who had flown to Australia for this race. And you know what happened? He beat them all. How did he do that? He beat them all. But not only running during the day, he ran all night. He didn't know you're supposed to sleep. So while all the other races were sleeping, he just kept on running. What happened the next year? The next year they had the same race. Cliff Young injured himself so he could not finish it. Eight runners beat his record. The year after that, the year after that, the year after that. What did they do? These runners said, if Cliff Young can do it, I can do it. They locked on to what Cliff Young did. And they locked it on for themselves. And their brain said, okay. They made choices. I can do this. And the brain said, absolutely. That's exciting. Mm. It's an amazing power our brain has, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I love that story. Yeah. Yeah. So, Steve, John, let's go so out much. and get our go. Let's go out and get our clogging boots, and <laughs> uh, and and walk, not run, to the nearest bakery. There you go. <laughs> Thank you again, Stephen. Again, You're just. Welcome. It's wonderful how you help us rethink about how we use this special organ that we have, our brain, and uh, helping us all be more successful and more satisfied with the results of our life because it believes, our brain believes what we tell it. Absolutely. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.